interested in a career in healthcare, Wake Tech is the place to be. I'm Haley Berg, Wake Tech Scott Scholar and a nursing student here. Wake Tech's health sciences programs are in high demand among students, and our graduates are highly sought after by local employers. Programs such as nursing, dental hygiene, dental assisting, emergency medical science, health and fitness science, medical assisting, radiography, medical sonography, pharmacy technology, medical laboratory technology, therapeutic massage, and more. You'll take your classes here at the Perry Health Sciences campus, right next door to Wake Med. The state-of-the-art labs here are second to none. Looks like I'm in a hospital, right? This is the nursing simulation suite for the Martha Mann Smith School of Nursing. Its realistic mannequins and equipment allow students to learn and practice on a simulated patient instead of a real one. Nurses are in such high demand in the triangle that many of our graduates have a job even before they graduate. Wake Tech's nursing program is one of the college's competitive entry programs, so you'll need to keep your GPA up as you take some prerequisites, including the nurse aid certification. The nice thing is, you'll get that certification under your belt and we'll get a pretty good idea of what it's like to work in nursing. Be sure to talk with a health sciences admissions specialist who will have all the details on how to be admitted to this popular program. This isn't a real emergency. This is the EMS Ban Ambulance for training EMS technicians and paramedics, which are always needed in Wake County. Wake Tech offers dental assisting and dental hygiene programs. This dental hygiene clinic offers students the opportunity to learn how to clean teeth, take x-rays, and everything else that's needed to promote good oral hygiene. Students work on real patients in this newly renovated clinic under the guidance of faculty and local dentists. These students also provide a great service to the community by treating patients. The Imaging Lab is where students prepare to become radiographers, mammographers, CT technologists, and MRI technologists. The college's newest programs are Electro-Neurodiagnostic Technology, where students study and record the electrical activity in the brain and nervous system, and Medical Sonography, where students learn to use high-frequency sound waves to take pictures inside the body. Wake Tech also offers medical laboratory technology. Students learn to conduct lab tests that help physicians diagnose, monitor, and treat disease. And Wake Tech's therapeutic massage program prepares all those great massage therapists who know how to work the kinks out. The health sciences programs also include healthcare simulation, human services technology, with concentrations in substance abuse, mental health, and gerontology, phlebotomy, medical assisting, and nurse aid. What makes Wake Tech's program so successful is its partnerships with area hospitals and health providers. The Perry Health Sciences campus is adjacent to Wake Med, making essential clinical training a convenient opportunity. Wake Tech also partners with UNC Rex and Duke Health System and numerous other clinical facilities for hands-on clinical training. Like all Wake Tech campuses, this campus has a great library, a tutoring center, career and employment resources, and disability services. There are great places to study between classes, open computer labs, and a coffee shop. And don't forget about all the things that make a college experience what it is. If you like sports, Wake Tech has two gyms, one on the Southern Wake and one on the Scott Northern Wake campus. The Wake Tech Eagles shine in the National Junior College Athletic Association. There are a lot of student activities to take advantage of and leadership opportunities in organizations and student government. So join us in Wake Tech's health sciences programs and the next time you go to the doctor's office, ask the nurse, the front office staff, the lab technician, where they got their training. Chances are they'll say, Wake Tech. Hello, welcome to the Health Sciences Division. 
We're excited that you decided to look at all the wonderful and exciting health sciences programs we have here at Wake Tech. Electroneurodiagnostic technology is one of the newest programs at Wake Tech, and many people have never heard of a career in electroneurodiagnostic technology. Technologists in electroneurodiagnostic test the nervous system to diagnose and monitor neurological conditions and other related health issues. Careers are in the hospital and clinic environments with all ages and all levels of care. Demand for trained technologists is very strong as the field grows nationwide. Our program at Wake Tech accepts students for fall entry and last five semesters, with the last semester fully in the clinical setting. Students will graduate fully prepared to take their registry exams and quickly find a job either locally or across the country. Math, science, writing, and verbal communication are all skills technologists use every day to help solve the puzzles of the neurological disorders. They work with neurologists and surgeons to find the answers to a patient's medical needs. If this exciting and challenging work sounds interesting to you, please check out our program online. The Healthcare Simulation Technology Program is an exciting new executive style degree offered by Wake Tech and is the only program of its kind in the state of North Carolina. The Healthcare Simulation Technology Program will prepare students by synthesizing psychological, environmental, and equipment reliability to produce interdisciplinary simulation with appropriate assessment and debriefing activities. Students will also be prepared for simulation center management and oversight positions available within a range of healthcare programs, disciplines, and hospitals. Wake Tech's program is unique in that it is the only online undergraduate healthcare simulation program in the country. This program enrolls once annually in the fall semester, and a three semester certificate option is also available. Coursework is 100% online with two executive style week long campus visits in the spring semesters of each year, making the program accessible for working adults and easy to complete over five semesters. The curriculum in the healthcare simulation technology degree program is aligned with the Society for Simulation and Healthcare's Certified Healthcare Simulation Educator exam, while the curriculum in the certificate program is aligned with the Certified Healthcare Simulation Operations Specialist exam. Industry certifications such as these assist students in marketability and employability. Currently credentialed paramedics and nurses will be awarded eight credit hours towards completion of the degree by submitting a copy of their active credential. Who should apply? Credentialed healthcare providers across a range of disciplines who are looking to diversify their education or teaching portfolio, or students without a healthcare background looking to contribute to the healthcare profession without direct patient care. Our goal at Wake Tech Community College is credible, innovative education that moves students forward in their career while helping achieve their goals. The first step is to apply to the program. What are you waiting for? Let us help you move forward today. For questions about the program or to request additional information, please contact Dr. Ginny Rankowitz at gkrankowitz at wagetech.edu or visit our website at bit.ly backslash sim degree. Welcome to the therapeutic massage department at Wake Tech. Massage therapists are allied health professionals who work in a wide variety of settings, including spas, franchise clinics, physician, chiropractic or physical therapy offices, hospitals, hotels, and fitness centers. Massage therapists may also choose to go into business for themselves and open their own practice. And some therapists provide mobile services, meaning they travel to their client's home or office. This is a great time to become a massage therapist. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this occupation is expected to grow faster than average over the next 10 years. Here at Wake Tech, our therapeutic massage program is two semesters long. Students must successfully complete the first semester before moving on to the second. Students begin in the fall semester and take MTH 110, Fundamentals of Massage, and Bio 163, Basic Anatomy and Physiology. After successful completion of those courses, the student moves on to the spring semester and takes MTH 120, Therapeutic Massage Applications, MTH 121, Clinical Supplement, 
MTH-125, Ethics of Massage, and MTH-130, Therapeutic Massage Management. Pharmacy Technology. Pharmacy Technology Program at Wake Tech is an Associate of Applied Science degree program. This program is five semesters long and includes clinical rotations in community pharmacies, hospital pharmacies, and specialty pharmacies. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, pharmacy technicians are in high demand in the healthcare and pharmaceutical care industry. Employment is expected to grow faster than the average for all occupations through 2022 due to increasing needs for pharmaceutical care services and products. Graduates of the Pharmacy Technology Program will possess the knowledge and skills to perform pharmacy related functions, including pharmacy management functions and provide pharmaceutical care services under the supervision of a licensed pharmacist, including gaining clinical experience in a variety of pharmacy and healthcare settings, including hospital, community, and specialty pharmacies. Graduates will also become certified pharmacy technicians by successfully completing the National Pharmacy Technician Certification Examination, which is administered by the Pharmacy Technician Certification of Board. They will also meet the legal requirements of having an Associate in Applied Science degree in Pharmacy Technology and being a Certified Pharmacy Technician in order to work in hospitals as a validating technician who supervises and checks the work of other technicians. The Imaging Department at Wake Tech Community College offers five separate degrees. They are Computer Tomography, better known as CT, Magnetic Resonance Imaging, better known as MRI, Mammography, Radiography, and our newest and exciting addition to the Imaging Department is Medical Sonography, better known as Ultrasound. Let's start with Computer Tomography, or CT. This is an advanced modality in the imaging world. The program consists of two semesters, which starts in the fall and finishes in the spring. A student would earn a certificate degree. According to Indeed.com, the average salary for a CT technologist is about $30 an hour. CT technologists can work in hospitals, outpatient testing centers, and private practices, to name a few. Our graduates have been successful on passing the national licensure with a 100% pass rate on first attempt. What CT technologists do? CT technologists use radiation to produce images of the human body. The images are displayed as thin slices. Once the images are produced, the CT technologist can view the images of the particular body part in slices, side by side, top to bottom, and front to back. The second program I would like to talk about is Magnetic Resonance Imaging, or MRI. This is also an advanced modality of the imaging world. The program consists of three semesters, which starts in the summer and finishes in the spring. A student would earn a diploma degree. According to Indeed.com, the average hourly salary for an MRI technologist is about $31. MRI technologists can also work in hospitals and outpatient testing centers. Our graduates have been successful on passing the national licensure with a 100% pass rate on first attempt. Actually, our graduates score on the national registry rank higher than the national average. What MRI technologists do? One of the biggest differences from MRI and CT is that MRI uses really strong magnets to produce images of various body parts. Like CT, MRI's images are displayed as thin slices. Both CT and MRI allow the radiologist the ability to view the body parts in small increments. 
The final images can be viewed just like CT, side by side, top to bottom, and front to back. Mammography is one of our newest programs. The first cohort started in January 2020. This advanced modality requires two semesters of classes in clinical. Mammography is a dual entry program where one cohort starts in the fall and the second cohort will start in the spring. On average, the program accepts eight students. Upon successful completion of the program, the student would earn a certificate degree. Mammographers may find employment in hospitals, outpatient and women's testing centers. Indeed lists the average salary for a mammography technologist at $30 an hour. What mammographers do? The mammographer produces images of the patient's breast using radiation. The images of the breast can be both male and female. The images help the radiologist diagnose any pathology. The most common pathology would be cancer. However, that would not be the only pathology that may be found. Some mammography machines allow the mammographer the ability to produce the images in 3D. This allows the radiologist to see the image anatomy in 3D. The next program in the imaging department is radiography. This is our largest program in imaging. The radiography program consists of five semesters. The program is dual entry and accepts students in the fall semester and spring semester. On average, the program accepts roughly 20 students for each cohort. Once the student completes the program, they will earn an associate's degree. The average hourly salary for a radiologic technologist is about $24. The radiography program is proud of its 100% pass rate on the National Registry, as well as the 100% employment rate. You may find radiologic technologists working in hospitals, outpatient testing centers, urgent cares, and private offices. What radiologic technologists do? The radiologic technologist uses radiation to produce images of various body parts. Most people think x-ray is only looking at bone. However, radiography exams can also look at internal structures of the human anatomy. The images are digital, which means the final product can be displayed within a matter of seconds. The images are saved to the computer system and sent to the radiologist to view. Our last imaging program is our newest program, medical sonography or ultrasound. This program is slated to begin January 2021. The medical sonography program is a five semester program. The program is dual entry with a cohort starting in the spring and a second cohort starting in the fall. The student will earn an associate's degree once they have completed the program. The average hourly salary for a medical sonographer is $30. Currently, there is a high demand for medical sonographers. Medical sonographers can find work in hospitals, outpatient testing centers, and private offices. What sonographers do? Sonographers use sound waves to produce images of various parts of the body. When you hear the word ultrasound, most people think of taking pictures of a baby. Sonographers image more than just babies. They look at internal organs such as the liver, gallbladder, the bladder, and various blood vessels and veins to mention a few. One of the unique parts of ultrasound is the sonographer can actually record the body activity in motion as a small video. The radiologist can view this video to diagnose any abnormalities of normal functions. Dental hygiene is an associate in applied science program. It's two years or five semesters in length with 76 credit hours. The program prepares students to assess, plan, implement, and evaluate dental hygiene care for individual patients and for the community. We are accredited by the American Dental Association Commission on Dental Accreditation. At the end of the program, you are license eligible and you may sit for the National Board Dental Hygiene Exam, as well as the Council of Interstate Testing Agencies exams that lead to licensure. At this time, the average salary is $71,197.
Dental hygiene has a competitive admissions process. It is run through the Health Sciences Advising Office. Applications are accepted April 1st through January 31st of each year. The first step is to complete an online information session. It will give you all of the information needed to apply to the program. There are eight total classes that can be taken ahead of time to earn competitive admissions points. The eight classes are listed here on this slide. Once admitted to the program, you'll have 21 additional dental hygiene classes. Each year, we have 24 admitted to the program. Please contact Health Sciences Advising for more information. Welcome to the Health and Fitness Science Department. Health and Fitness is a broad title for our department, but it allows us the ability to teach a variety of topics. As you see, I have listed examples of what students will learn in the Health and Fitness Science curriculum. The first semester starts with taking anatomy, where you will learn different body systems like the cardiac and muscular systems. You will also take exercise science, where students will learn physiology. In this class, you will learn why your body changes when you stress it in different ways. For example, why do I get stronger when I lift weights? How can I run faster when I train for long distances? Or why do I lose weight when I eat and exercise a specific way? In the last semester, students will take a course that teaches you how to change human behavior. It is great to know all the diets and exercises, but if you can't get your client to change their current habits, results will be hard to come by. This slide also shows a picture of our new fitness center at Northern Campus where several of our classes take place. The Health and Fitness Science Department is committed to educating its students to be highly competent in the workplace. In the health and fitness field, most of the careers are hands-on, so our instruction focuses on practical settings like the gym or our fitness testing lab. Furthermore, we equally value classroom education, so our students can pass their certification exams. Our other mission is to prepare students to excel at a four-year school where they will be completing their bachelor's degree in an exercise science-related field. Our department is currently making agreements with these four-year schools so students can efficiently transfer credits and obtain a bachelor's degree within two years of graduation. Finally, here is a list of careers our students are typically interested in. Personal training and group fitness instructor are by far the most popular. For some, it's a part-time job while they are in school or working other jobs, while others will train clients full-time. As you go down the list, you will see an asterisk indicating that more schooling or training may be necessary. If you would like further information about the Health and Fitness Science Department, please feel free to reach out to me at the contact information provided in the slide. I hope you will consider a future in the Health and Fitness Science Department. Welcome to the Martha Mann Smith School of Nursing. Nursing is often described as a calling, a profession that enables you to help others in difficult circumstances. Being present as people face serious health challenges or injuries, witnessing the moment of birth or the end of life. Patients and families rely on nurses to care for them and be their advocate at the most vulnerable times in their lives. That is why for 18 consecutive years, the American public rated nurses as the number one spot in the Gallup's annual Most Honest and Ethical Professions poll. Registered nursing is one of today's most in-demand careers, and the Martha Mann Smith School of Nursing is proud of our reputation in the community for preparing excellent, well-qualified nurses. The School of Nursing has experienced faculty, state-of-the-art facilities, and a reputation for graduating highly qualified, safe nurses. Our goal is to prepare graduates with entry-level competencies to practice as RNs in numerous settings, including hospitals, behavioral health, physician's practice, hospice care, outpatient surgical centers, long and short-term care facilities, clinics, home health, and rehab facilities. The Martha Mann Smith School of Nursing is approved by the North Carolina Board of Nursing and accredited by the Accreditation Commission for Education and Nursing. Upon completion of the program, graduates are eligible to take the National Council Licensure Exam RN, or it's better known NCLEX RN, for a license as a registered nurse. 
For more information on the School of Nursing, please visit our webpage for information and admissions requirements. The nursing program admits students in the fall and spring and has a limited enrollment. To select applicants for programs with limited clinical spaces, Wake Tech uses a competitive admissions procedure with a point system. It is not a waiting list. Applicants who are eligible to be ranked will be assigned points based on the grades earned in the general education classes required for their program. General education classes include English 111, Psych 150, and Bio 168-169. The faculty and staff look forward to helping you reach your goal as an RN. Dental Assisting. The Dental Assisting program is only one year in length. 32 students are accepted each year via the competitive admissions process. Students are required to attend a mandatory information session as a part of the application process. The Dental Assisting Programs Clinic is located on the Perry Health Sciences campus. The program moved into its state-of-the-art facility in 2019. The clinic's design simulates a private practice dental setting. It's an awesome setting for students to learn and perform their chair size skills. Upon completion, the graduate is awarded a diploma recognized by the North Carolina State Board of Dental Examiners as a DA2 and is ready to secure a job in the dental setting. The program is accredited by the American Dental Association's Commission on Dental Accreditation. The program has earned a reputation of excellence over the past 30 years within the dental community. Graduates are able to secure employment almost immediately upon program completion. Students receive hands-on chairside experience at the Adams UNC School of Dentistry, Wake County Human Services Dental Clinic, and private practice dental offices within the area to prepare for employment. In the summer, students may be assigned in private, general, and specialty practices. If you enjoy interacting with people, dental assisting may be the perfect choice for you. Please visit our website, dentalassisting.waketech.edu. The Associate of Applied Science degree in Emergency Medical Science, or EMS, accepts 30 new students once per year in August and takes five semesters to complete. As an EMS student, you'll learn the practice of emergency medicine and will complete over 600 hours of clinical in our area hospitals and EMS agencies. Paramedics are trained on the medical model, just like doctors, which means that you will learn clinical, diagnostic, and treatment skills virtually the same way physicians do. Paramedics are so skilled that in certain situations, there is nothing that a doctor can do for a patient that is any different than the treatment and care that a paramedic can provide. At the end of the program, you will be eligible to take state or national paramedic credentialing exams, and we will help you. The EMS program has a 100% credentialing pass rate and a 100% employability rate after graduation. EMS agencies from across the state recruit Wake Tech graduates and many of our students have jobs before graduation. The EMS program is designed around our students' needs. We intentionally schedule all core classes two days per week and allow students to plan clinical around their schedule. We want our students to be able to focus on their education when they are here and have plenty of time for work, childcare, and other responsibilities when they are not here. We don't want you to put your life on hold and then worry about how you're going to make it work. We realize that you have responsibilities and we want to help you meet your goal as seamlessly as we can. What are you waiting for? Start your journey towards becoming one of our nation's elite paramedics today. For questions about the program or to request additional information, please contact Dr. Jenny Rankowitz at gkrankowitz at waketech.edu or visit our website at ems.waketech.edu. 
The EMS department also oversees continuing education for currently credentialed EMTs, AEMTs, and paramedics, including those classes that can be used for recredential for North Carolina or National Registry. We also offer newly added courses designed to lead to additional credentialing. Our critical care paramedic course will prepare students for the FPC exam, while the instructor methodology class will prepare applicants for North Carolina or National Instructor Credentialing. This part of our department is growing rapidly and new classes are being offered all the time. For questions about workforce continuing education programming or to request additional information, please contact Eric Hastings at emhastings at waketechedu or visit our website at bit.ly backslash WCEEMS. Medical Laboratory Technology. Medical Laboratory Technology is a two year associate degree program. The curriculum prepares you to perform clinical laboratory procedures in chemistry, hematology, microbiology, and immunohematology. If you love science and math, be a part of the healthcare team that helps physicians diagnose patients. The career outlook for a medical laboratory technologist is excellent. Technologists may find opportunities in medical labs, research setting, and industry. Many medical lab technologists pursue their bachelor's degree while working as an MLT. The Human Services Program is an open enrollment degree program that prepares the student to work in a helping profession. There are four areas of focus. A general degree for students who may want to work in a variety of settings. There's a concentration in substance abuse, mental health, and also gerontology. We offer several certificate options for students who get a degree in one area and have interest in another. The program takes approximately two years full time. Classes are offered in a variety of formats and times, including fully seated classes, synchronous virtual classes, hybrid and blended classes, and online classes. Students can attend part-time or full-time. Right now, the program cannot be completely solely online, although that may change in the future. Human services is a varied field in which there are opportunities to help people in a variety of ways. Graduates work in multiple settings, including the ones listed here directly helping clients to improve their lives and embrace new opportunities. There are some transfer opportunities as well. If you would like further information, please visit our Facebook page or contact the department head, Sherry Naren. Medical assisting. What do medical assistants do? The medical assisting program at Wake Tech Community College prepares students to perform administrative, clinical, and laboratory procedures in an ambulatory setting. Wake Tech offers both a one-year diploma and a two-year associate degree in applied science. Employment opportunities for a graduate of the medical assistant program includes doctor's offices, hospitals, and other healthcare facilities. The diploma program is a one year full time day program with classes being taught in both an online and hybrid format at the Perry Health Sciences campus. After completing the medical assisting diploma, Students can complete an associate in applied science degree, all in an online format.
Students will also complete a clinical rotation. The clinical practicum is an unpaid, supervised, hands-on experience where students are placed at a clinical site, which includes physicians' offices or other ambulatory healthcare settings. Clinical sites are located in Wake, Durham, and Johnston counties, which afford a variety of learning experiences. Graduates of Wake Tech's Medical Assisting Program may be eligible to take the American Association of Medical Assistants Certification Exam to become certified medical assistants. Thank you so much for joining Wake Tech's virtual open house. Make sure to smash that apply button right now because we can't wait to see you as a student. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at admissions.wakeTech.edu. Thank you. Thank you for your attention during this time. We are now at the portion of our question answer period. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask those questions. And we do have a facilitator that will uh, field those questions or answer those questions herself. Our first question is, what is the difference between the associate's degree in nursing and a BSN? Any, anyone from nursing to be able to answer that? Yes. Hi, thank you for your question. Um, the difference between associate degree and a bachelor's in nursing, associate degree, both of them first off are RNs. So after you finish associate degree or bachelor's degree, um, you are eligible to take the licensure exam. And with the licensure exam, then you become a registered nurse. Um, the difference is associate degree is um, only a um, community college degree and a bachelor's is um, you have to go to the university. So most of our students within five years of graduating will sign contracts with their associate degree with an agency to go back to school for bachelor's and then that will be funded through their hospitals um, within five years of graduation. So financially speaking, a lot of people find the associate degree route is more um, feasible for them that they only have to pay for the community college aspect and then sign on with the hospital and have the rest covered mostly. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Um, my next question is um, probably best answered by ad, um, the admissions um, person, Toy. Um, what are the, the different programs that are um, competitive and what are the classes you need to take for the um, competitive process to earn points? Thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, so the competitive programs that we have on campuses, uh, campus are the imaging programs. So those would be your radiography, your mammography program, um, your medical sonography program, nursing, dental hygiene, and dental assisting. Um, at this time, it's probably too many prerequisite or pre-admissions courses to list, but your standard courses include uh, courses like your English composition, your general psychology, your sciences. Um, there are various anatomy and physiology courses that we require. In some cases, there may be a sociology course. In, in most cases, there, is, there are humanities or fine art electives that need to be taken. Uh, what I would suggest or encourage you to do is if you are interested in any one of the competitive admissions programs, we do have required mandatory information sessions that are required of our applicants even before we accept them to Wake Tech. So what you want to do is go to HS, that's health science, HS info session .edu. There you will be able to access the links for the virtual information sessions. Thanks again. Thank you, Toy. Our next question is for um, health and fitness science. Can the health and fitness science students go on to become PE teachers? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we get this question a lot and unfortunately we're probably not the best track for that 
Uh, we do have PE classes in our department, but we don't teach you necessarily how to facilitate those classes. They're more just physical education credits that then a lot of students use to transfer. So yes, you could, but we're definitely not the most efficient track. Thank you. Um, again, this one's for specifically for dental hygiene, but it might be also relevant for other programs. Are letters of recommendation or an interview required for dental hygiene? Thanks for the question. Um, so there are no interviews required. Um, we just don't have the staff um, to be able to um, have interviews for over 100 applicants. I know nursing gets over 200 applicants and for dental hygiene, we tend to have over 100. Radiography tends to have over 80 applicants. So not enough staff to be able to have uh, interviews for students or recommendation letters. So unfortunately, those elements are not part of our clinical admissions process. Um, right now, specifically for hygiene, it's completing those eight required courses and doing extremely well in those courses and the information session that you will do will help to clarify what the points have been for accepted students for the past 9, 10, 11 years. Thanks for the question. Our next question is for medical assisting. What is the typical work week for a medical assistant? Hi, thank you for the question. The typical work we more than likely you will be working in a doctor's office um, for medical assisting and a typical work week would usually consist of an eight to five or a nine to five Monday through Friday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next question is back to nursing. Um, nursing obviously is a very large um, program. What is the typical cohort size of, of students for the nursing program? Hi, thank you for your question. Um, for nursing, we have a cap of how many nurses we can have nursing students in the program. Um, so it, there's other factors if a student steps out for a semester and then comes back to us, they go into our general count. Um, we accept between about 70 and 80 students um, and that's twice a, um, twice a year. So that's in the spring and in the fall. It is a very competitive process. So all of the previous grades and prerequisites are very important to do well. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, um, the next one is for dental assisting. Um, do I have to complete dental assisting school to get into the dental hygiene school? Or maybe it's for dental hygiene as well. Awesome, so uh, the answer to that is no. Um, you do not have to be a certified dental assistant to apply to our dental hygiene program. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a large number of applicants that opt not to do dental assisting first. However, we do have a good number of applicants that are certified dental assistants who um, completed that credential, worked for a little while and returned to school because they want to advance um, in their career field. So that is not a requirement at all. Thank you. This one is actually um, it was suggested by Medical Lab Tech, but um, I think it's probably more admissions again. Uh, what is what are all the steps for the admissions process for a health science student? Oh wow! <laughs> so. Um, Here's what I would suggest. Um, generally speaking, every student who attends Wake Tech has the same initial um, applicant process or admissions process. You all have to um, attend, uh, go to the school website, excuse me, and you have to click on apply.wakeTech.edu or from the main page, click become a student. And then you'll complete the residency interview, which is not an actual interview, but it's residency questions to determine if you're an in-state or out-of-state student. And then afterwards, you'll be required to uh, create a CFNC account to begin the Wake Tech application. It costs nothing. It's a free application and it's very basic. It doesn't take long. However, when it comes to the health sciences programs, each program has its own set of admissions requirements. So generally speaking, all of the competitive programs do require uh, all pre-applicants do a mandatory information session. And then once you've done the residency, your application to Wake Tech and your information session, you want to be sure that we either have your high school transcript or college transcripts or all of them. And then we're able to admit you as a pre 
health student. So it's either pre-medical assisting, pre-nursing, pre-radiography. And then at that point, you would meet a, an admissions counselor, academic advisor to discuss what your academic plan would entail. So obviously for tra uh, transfer students, your process will be a little different as far as advising is concerned. And those who are brand new graduates from high school, um, we would help you establish that plan to determine exactly how long the process would take, what courses you need to begin with, and really help you along in that process. Process. So what I would first do if I were the student asking the question or anyone on the line is to visit that respective programs page and outlined on the admissions tab of that page will outline exactly what steps you need to follow for admissions into the institution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next one's for health and fitness. Um, on average, how many years does it take to finish the health and fitness science degree? Thank you. So we have it set up that you can finish in two years. What we're finding is we have a lot of part time students, so we have developed plans. So if you're going to take a three year program, uh, we kind of lay out how we would advise you to do that and also a four year program. I would say on average students are taking about three years, but plenty have done it with within just two years. Thank you. Um, this one is for dental hygiene. Um, are courses transferred from another college accepted as transfer credit into dental hygiene? Um, so I'm not sure how to answer the question. If they are clinical courses, um, typically it's a no. Um, however, that decision is made by the departmental chairperson. Um, so that might be a very good question for Brenda Maddox. If we are referring to uh, the preclinical courses like the standard English, psychology, communications courses, then yes, um, if it's an accredited institution, then we will evaluate those credits and determine if they will receive evaluation credit um, at Wake Tech. So the non-clinical courses, the answer is a quick yes, but it's all determined based upon our transcript evaluations. And if they are clinical courses, then that's a question that you would have to direct to Brenda Maddox, our department of cha departmental chairperson for dental hygiene. Thank you. Um, the next question, uh, probably um, it'd be interesting to hear the answer for um, from all the, the people who are present. Am I able to work during the program? I can start off for medical assisting. Um, the first two semesters, you are able to work during the program. However, your third semester, you will be doing um, your internship. Um, you will be at a medical office and you are there the hours that they are open, which is typically eight to five. So no, you would, well, you could still work, but it would not be a normal work day. You would have to work a night shift or weekends. And that can become very overwhelming for a student. Thank you. For health and fitness, you absolutely can work while you take the classes. Uh, we are virtual right now, so it's a lot easier to work. However, once we get back into the classroom, our classes are typically seated from 8 to about 3, 3.30. Uh, so if you would have a job, it would have to take place in the afternoon. If you want to work in the field of personal training, uh, all that, you would probably want to wait until after the third semester. At that point, we say you have the knowledge to take the certification exam to then get a job within some exercise science field. So part time employment. Yeah, most of our students uh, are employed. Hi, this is uh, Ms. Mendel from nursing. Um, as far as nursing is concerned, um, most of our students do work part time. A lot of them are working currently as nursing assistants. Um, I teach full time in the spring and fall in our last semester course that has the most clinical and has the most demands. Um, this course we find it's very hard for students to work um, beyond PRN, which is as needed or even just a part time. Um, so because we have 240 clinical hours and we're in class every day, um, every Tuesday for um, six to seven hours, um, work can be very challenging. But if you have a flexible job that last semester, then a lot of times it can work if you are able to work part time. Um, full time in nursing school, um, it's very hard for students to ever have a full time employment and succeed. Any other panel members that want to comment on that one? Hi, Francine and Dental Assisting. We encourage our students to not work 
um, due to the course load. Uh, if they do decide to keep their job, we recommend 10 hours or less. Thank you. And I'll just speak to dental hygiene. Um, I'm sure some of our students who are in the clinics um, actually work part time, perhaps evening and weekends, but it is a very heavy clinical schedule. Um, you are seeing patients and so having that patient in that quota requirement can be very heavy in addition to the amount of hours that you have to study outside of class. So some students do forget that even though you're enrolled in a specific number of hours to be in class, you also have hours that you need to dedicate towards study time. So for that reason, um, part time, but we tend to see the most successful students in that particular program not working at all. Um, in regards to radiography, I could probably say pretty much the same thing, is it's not so much um, the class time and the time spent on campus, it's the amount of time that you should, stay, you sh you should study outside of school um, to just be sure that you make the grades to be able to remain in the program. So working is a possibility, but it's all about proper balance. Thank you. All right, the next question is for um, imaging and, and radiography. Are the MRI and CT programs considered advancements in the field of radiography? Um, that answer, the answer to that is, is yes, it's correct. So a student is unable to pursue CT or MRI until they have completed a uh, imaging program, a radiography program, and have their uh, registry, their certification, um, because that's part of that clinical ad admissions process is that you have to present a copy of your registry or certification to be able to apply to those advanced modality programs. Thank you. Does the medical lab sciences program have evening courses? Um, really, none of our health science programs have evening components, um, except for maybe health, exercise, and fitness. But I know the the programs at the Perry Health Science campus. Um, the campus is pretty pretty much empty at night um, because most of the clinical courses and the preclinical courses all occur during the day, unfortunately. Um, perhaps they'll explore evening options in the future, but right now um, most programs will say that they're full-time day programs. Thank you for your attention during this time. We are now at the portion of our question and answer period. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask those questions. And we do have a facilitator that will uh, field those questions or answer those questions yourself. Our first question is, what is the difference between the associate's degree in nursing and a BSN? Any here, anyone from nursing available to answer that? Yes. Hi, thank you for your question. Um, the difference between associate degree and a bachelor's in nursing, associate degree, both of them first off are RNs. So after you finish associate degree or bachelor's degree, um, you are eligible to take the licensure exam. And with the licensure exam, then you become a registered nurse. Um, the difference is associate degree is um, only a um, community college degree and a bachelor's is um, you have to go to university. So most of our students within five years of graduating will sign contracts with their associate degree with an agency to go back to school for bachelor's and then that will be funded through their hospitals um, within five years of graduation. So financially speaking, a lot of people find the associate degree route is more um, feasible for them that they only have to pay for the community college aspect and then sign on with a hospital and have the rest covered mostly. Thank you for your question. Thank you. 
Um, my next question is um, probably best answered by ad, um, the admissions um, person, Toy. Um, what are the, the different programs that are um, competitive and what are the classes you need to take for the um, competitive process to earn points? Thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, so the competitive programs that we have on campuses, uh, on campus are the imaging programs. So those would be your radiography, your mammography program, um, your medical sonography program, nursing, dental hygiene, and dental assisting. Um, at this time, it's probably too many prerequisite or pre-admissions courses to list, but your standard courses include uh, courses like your English composition, your general psychology, your sciences. Um, there are various anatomy and physiology courses that we require. In some cases, there may be a sociology course. In, in most cases, there, is, there are humanities or fine art electives that need to be taken. Uh, what I would suggest or encourage you to do is if you are interested in any one of the competitive admissions programs, we do have required mandatory information sessions that are required of our applicants even before we accept them to Wake Tech. So what you want to do is go to HS, that's health science, HS info session .wake -tech .edu. There you will be able to access the links for the virtual information sessions. Thanks again. Thank you, Toy. Our next question is for um, health and fitness science. Can the health and fitness science students go on to become PE teachers? Yeah, thank you. Uh, we get this question a lot, and unfortunately, we're probably not the best track for that. Uh, we do have PE classes in our department, but we don't teach you necessarily how to facilitate those classes. They're more just physical education credits that then a lot of students use to transfer. So yes, you could, but we're definitely not the most efficient track. Thank you. Um, again, this one's for specifically for dental hygiene, but it might be also relevant for other programs. Are letters of recommendation or an interview required for dental hygiene? Thanks for the question. Um, so there are no interviews required. Um, we just don't have the staff um, to be able to um, have interviews for over 100 applicants. I know nursing gets over 200 applicants and for dental hygiene, we tend to have over 100. Radiography tends to have over 80 applicants. So not enough staff to be able to have uh, interviews for students or recommendation letters. So unfortunately, those elements are not part of our clinical admissions process. Um, right now, specifically for hygiene, it's completing those eight required courses and doing extremely well in those courses. And the information session that you will do will help to clarify what the points have been for accepted students for the past 9, 10, 11 years. Thanks for the question. Our next question is for medical assisting. What is the typical work week for a medical assistant? Hi, thank you for the question. The typical work week, more than likely, you will be working in a doctor's office um, for medical assisting, and a typical work week would usually consist of an eight to five or a nine to five Monday through Friday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next question is back to nursing. Um, nursing obviously is a very large um, program. What is the typical cohort size of, of students for the nursing program? Hi, thank you for your question. Um, for nursing, we have a cap of how many nurses we can have nursing students in the program. Um, so it, there's other factors if a student steps out for a semester and then comes back to us, they go into our general count. Um, we accept between about 70 and 80 students um, and that's twice a, sem um, twice a year. So that's in the spring and in the fall. It is a very competitive process. So all of the previous grades and prerequisites are very important to do well. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, um, the next one is for dental assisting. Um, do I have to complete dental assisting school to get into the dental hygiene school? Or maybe it's for dental hygiene as well. 
Awesome. So uh, the answer to that is no. Um, you do not have to be a certified dental assistant to apply to our dental hygiene program. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a large number of applicants that opt not to do dental assisting first. However, we do have a good number of applicants that are certified dental assistants who um, completed that credential, worked for a little while and returned to school because they want to advance um, in their career field. So that is not a requirement at all. Thank you. This one is actually um, it was suggested by Medical Lab Tech, but um, I think it's probably more admissions again. Uh, what is what are all the steps for the admissions process for a health science student? Oh wow! <laughs> so um, here's what I would suggest. Um, generally speaking, every student who attends Wake Tech has the same initial. Um, applicant process or admissions process. You all have to um, attend, uh, go to the school website, excuse me, and you have to click on apply.wakeTech.edu or from the main page, click become a student. And then you'll complete the residency interview, which is not an actual interview, but it's residency questions to determine if you're an in-state or out-of-state student. And then afterwards, you'll be required to uh, create a CFNC account to begin the Wake Tech application. It costs nothing. It's a free application and it's very basic. It doesn't take long. However, when it comes to the health sciences programs, each program has its own set of admissions requirements. So generally speaking, all of the competitive programs do require uh, all pre-applicants do a mandatory information session. And then once you've done the residency, your application to Wake Tech and your information session, you want to be sure that we either have your high school transcript or college transcripts or all of them. And then we're able to admit you as a pre health student, so it's either pre-medical assisting, pre-nursing, pre-radiography, and then at that point you would meet a, an admissions counselor academic advisor to discuss what your academic plan would entail. So obviously for tra uh, transfer students, your process will be a little different as far as advising is concerned, and those who are brand new graduates from high school, um, we would help you establish that plan to determine exactly how long the process would take, what courses you need to begin with, and really help you along in that process. Process. So what I would first do if I were the student asking the question or anyone on the line is to visit that respective programs page and outlined on the admissions tab of that page will outline exactly what steps you need to follow for admissions into the institution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next one is for health and fitness. Um, on average, how many years does it take to finish the health and fitness science degree? Thank you. So we have it set up that you can finish in two years. What we're finding is we have a lot of part time students, so we have developed plans. So if you're going to take a three year program, uh, we kind of lay out how we would advise you to do that and also a four year program. I would say on average students are taking about three years, but plenty have done it with within just two years. Thank you. Um, this one is for dental hygiene. Um, are courses transferred from another college accepted as transfer credit into dental hygiene? Um, so I'm not sure how to answer the question. If they are clinical courses, um, typically it's a no. Um, however, that decision is made by the departmental chairperson. Um, so that might be a very good question for Brenda Maddox. If we are referring to uh, the preclinical courses like the standard English, psychology, communications courses, then yes, um, if it's an accredited institution, then we will evaluate those credits and determine if they will receive evaluation credit um, at Wake Tech. So the non-clinical courses, the answer is a quick yes, but it's all determined based upon our transcript evaluations. And if they are clinical courses, then that's a question that you would have to direct to Brenda Maddox, our department, departmental chairperson for dental hygiene. Thank you. Um, the next question, uh, probably um, it'd be interesting to hear the answer for um, from all the, the people who are present. Am I able to work during the program? I can start off for medical assisting. Um, the first two semesters, you are able to work during the program. However, your third semester, you will be doing um, 
your internship. Um, you will be at a medical office and you are there the hours that they are open, which is typically eight to five. So no, you would, well, you could still work, but it would not be a normal work day. You would have to work a night shift or weekends. And that can become very overwhelming for a student. Thank you. For health and fitness, you absolutely can work while you take the classes. Uh, we are virtual right now, so it's a lot easier to work. However, once we get back into the classroom, our classes are typically seated from 8 to about 3, 3.30. Uh, so if you would have a job, it would have to take place in the afternoon. If you want to work in the field of personal training, uh, all that, you would probably want to wait until after the third semester. At that point, we say you have the knowledge to take the certification exam to then get a job within some exercise science field. So part time employment. Yeah, most of our students uh, are employed. Hi, this is uh, Miss Mendel from nursing. Um, as far as nursing is concerned, um, most of our students do work part time. A lot of them are working currently as nursing assistants. Um, I teach full time in the spring and fall in our last semester course that has the most clinical and has the most demands. Um, this course we find it's very hard for students to work um, beyond PRN, which is as needed or even just a part time. Um, so because we have 240 clinical hours in one class every day, um, every Tuesday for um, six to seven hours, um, work can be very challenging. But if you have a flexible job that last semester, then a lot of times it can work if you are able to work part time. Um, full time in nursing school, um, it's very hard for students to ever have a full time employment and succeed. Any other panel members that want to comment on that one? Hi, Francine and Dental Assisting. We encourage our students to not work um, due to the course load. Uh, if they do decide to keep their job, we recommend 10 hours or less. Thank you. And I'll just speak to dental hygiene. Um, I'm sure some of our students who are in the clinics um, actually work part time, perhaps evening and weekends, but it is a very heavy clinical schedule. Um, you are seeing patients and so having that patient in that quota requirement can be very heavy in addition to the amount of hours that you have to study outside of class. So some students do forget that even though you're enrolled in a specific number of hours to be in class, you also have hours that you need to dedicate towards study time. So for that reason, um, part time, but we tend to see the most successful students in that particular program not working at all. Um, in regards to radiography, I could probably say pretty much the same thing is it's not so much um, the class time and the time spent on campus. It's the amount of time that you should stay. You, sh you should study outside of school um, to just be sure that you make the grades to be able to remain in the program. So working is a possibility, but it's all about proper balance. Thank you. All right, the next question is for um, imaging and, and radiography. Are the MRI and CT programs considered advancements in the field of radiography? Um, that answer, the answer to that is, is yes, it's correct. So a student is unable to pursue CT or MRI until they have completed a uh, imaging program, a radiography program, and have their uh, registry, their certification, um, because that's part of that clinical ad admissions process is that you have to present a copy of your registry or certification to be able to apply to those advanced modality programs. Thank you. Does the medical lab sciences program have evening courses? Um, really none of our health science programs have evening components um, except for maybe health, exercise and fitness, but I know the, the programs at the Perry Health Science campus, um, the campus is pretty, pretty much empty at night um, because most of the clinical courses and the preclinical courses all occur during the day, unfortunately. Um, perhaps they'll explore evening options in the future, but right now um, most programs will say that they're full-time day programs. 
would nutrition fall under exercise science? Do we have someone from uh, health and fitness? Yes, this is Erin Fergus from health and fitness. Um, we do have nutrition in health and fitness. It is um, a bio nutrition. So although most of our classes have the HFS um, acronym, we use the bio 155 nutrition. Um, we also do talk a little bit more about sport focused nutrition in our exercise physiology class. The second question is, do the hospitals in this area employ Wake Tech students? I can answer that um, for nurse for the nursing department. Um, the hospitals in the area do employ Wake Tech students. Um, they can work in a variety of areas for nursing. Um, some of our students do work as nurse aides at um, Wake Med, at Duke Raleigh, UNC Rex. They work in a multitude of settings. All right, the next question I have is what courses do I need to take for the competitive admissions process to earn points? Maybe uh, student services. Oh, sure, I can answer that. I'm Shelley. I'm with student services. Um, it depends on the program you're interested in. So if it's radiography, nursing, dental hygiene, um, then it's the it's the general education courses that are on that program of study. So anything that's the English, the psychology. So it just really depends on the program you're interested in. Thank you. Um, who can provide me with information about admission into the different programs? That would probably be enrollment again. Um, we do have specific health science admissions and advising um, counselors. We're at the Perry Health Science Campus. Um, if you just go um, onto your computer and you can type into your browser HS Admissions, so HS Health Science Admissions dot edu, that will take you to our page. And you can call us, you can email us, you can make an appointment with us, whatever is convenient for you. Thank you. Um, what is the typical work week for a medical assistant? The work week for a medical assistant is Monday through Fridays, typically with the office that's open on Monday through Friday. If your office is open on weekend, then yes, you're at the work weekend, but typically Monday through Fridays, eight to five. Thank you. For the medical lab technology um, program, is there a deadline for applying? Yes, and that's um, there's a deadline um, for they've got a clinical application. Also, the deadline is May 15th, but if you have any general education courses that you need to complete English, psychology, anatomy and physiology, go ahead and apply at any time so you can start those any semester. Okay, thank you. Um, how many students um, in the dental assisting program get jobs after graduation? Hi, it's Francine with Dental Assisting. Um, we have a great number of students that obtain jobs. Um, currently for the class of 2020, there is one still seeking employment out of 29 graduates. So typically 50% of them are employed upon graduation before, even before they graduate. Thank you. Thanks. This one is for um, the imaging folks. If I have a BS in biology, would that help with some credits in the sonography program? Do we have anybody here to, um, from imaging? I can answer the question. So um, you would have to submit your transcript official and uh, we would have to look at those credits. Um, of course, they would have to be evaluated by the transcript evaluation office, but there's a possibility like your basic courses, um, like your college composition, psychology, um, 
you know, the sciences would have to be evaluated, but there possibly may, um, depending upon the school, depending upon um, how the credits are assigned and the grades, um, you could receive credit toward those pre-admissions requirements. Thanks. Thank you. This question is for dental assisting. Do you have class every day for dental assisting? Hello, dental assisting again. Yes, we have class every single day. Um, depending on the semester, we have clinicals. Other than that, yes, classes and labs. Is this the orientation for the AAS degree for medical administration, medical billing and coding? So actually the medical billing and coding program um, actually is not a competitive health science program. It's under our business technologies program. So what you would want to do if you're interested in that particular program is apply to Wake Tech and then you will schedule a virtual appointment with an advisor that's housed at the North or South campus. Um, and what you'll do is select one of those campuses and the appointment itself will be virtual. And at that time, that particular advisor will discuss with you what courses you're eligible for for the medical billing and coding program. Okay, next question is for uh, medical assisting. Um, how is medical assisting different from other allied health professions? Um, so there are a couple ways to look at it. Medical assisting can be looked at as a entry level position. So for instance, if you are establishing for yourself a short term goal, it's really nice that you can complete the credential within a year to a year and a half. Whereas the other allied health programs that are degrees are going to take roughly uh, two years or more. So it really depends um, And what medical assistants do as described in the video is they are short, sort of the um, the first contact in a doctor's office or a medical facility. You're doing some of the basic um, record keeping, taking prescription history, the weight of the patient, the heart rate, et cetera, before the doctor actually comes in and does the complete appointment. So if you're looking for a program where you're trying to complete it in a shorter time frame, usually medical assistant really works well for students, but if you're really interested in pursuing a degree um, and you're ready to invest uh, about two and a half, two years to about three and a half years to get the degree complete, then um, you would look at our other programs. Thank you. My next question is for nursing. What happens in the simulation lab? Hi there. Um, well, a lot of things can happen in the sim lab. Um, one of the things that's really important about nursing is that students are given a lot of information in the classroom, but then they need to use certain skills to actually put it all together. So the simulation lab allows students to go and actually practice skills that they've learned about in lecture. And the great part about this is that they can practice, they can make mistakes, they can learn how to correct those mistakes, and all of it is in a very safe environment. The backup to the simulation is when when people actually go into the clinical area where we we treat real patients. But the simulation lab allows students to practice and to hone their skills so that they are a lot more comfortable when they get to the clinical area. Thank you. Um, the next question is how many classes are online in the nursing program? Depending on the course that you're in, we have virtual classes, but all of them have the component of clinical or even the skills lab, depending on where you are in the program. So the short answer is yes, there are online online classes, classes sorry, available, but it depends on where you are in the program. When you start at the very beginning, the first course spends a lot of time getting you ready for what you're going to be doing as you go through. And so there are there are pieces of that course that have virtual um, class time, but a lot of it is is seated class. Now, since COVID, many things have sort of changed. 
but the program can't be considered a total online program. There are a lot of other things that you would be doing, even if the lecture's online, there are responsibilities in the lab and also in clinical. Thank you. All right, this next question probably is best for Toy. Um, I'm waiting to, I'm wanting to become an occupational therapist. Is this a health science and do I need an associates of science? Toy, you're uh, muted. Sorry about that. So um, if you're looking at occupational therapy, you first want to probably consider a school that has that program. Um, if you're interested in doing the prerequisites for the program at Wake Tech, then that's fine. Um, but you always have to consult the school that actually has the program. So you're taking the appropriate courses to be able to meet the requirements. So in all actuality, you wouldn't be necessarily a health science major at Wake Tech because we don't have a clinical program like it. What you want to do is actually major in transfer and we have the Associate of Arts and the Associate of Science. And then from there, you'll be advised, but you first wanna always start with your end goal. Start with the school that you want to transfer to that has the program. They will list those requirements that you need to complete in order to apply to that program. And then you'll schedule to meet with an advisor that will help you select those courses for your curriculum here at Wake Tech. Thank you. We have come to the end of the questions that were, were offered up and it is 1045. I believe um, you can move on to another program if you wish, um, but that is uh, our time for today. Thank you. Awesome. We thank you all so much for joining us and we do hope that you attend other sessions and you can always come back to this particular recording to be able to review or review um, all of the information that was shared today. Do have a wonderful day and we do hope that you're strongly considering Wake Tech as your school of choice.